ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode here on Pastiche of Skin. This time we're trying to do the live stream while we wait for the E3 conference to continue. And what we're trying to do while we're here is we're going to sit and play um, a couple of video games just to fill the time. I mean, I've got not much else to do until the show starts, so what I'm doing is actually testing out a couple of technical tricks that get us with dual screaming of the show and uh, trying to bring you as much entertainment as I possibly can. So we're just going to try a little trick here, see if this works. We're currently broadcasting like this with the full overlay on Twitch.tv. But what, what I'm trying to do is also co, well, co-stream or dual stream the show on YouTube at the same time. So we're going to include, um, hopefully, audio and visual and get this to work. Let's see here. Ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba -ba. Right, I'm just going to change the names of things here so that we actually have them matching up with uh, what's going on on this. Pre E3. Bethesda. Broadcast. It would help if I could spell the word Bethesda. <laughs> Without a f Somehow I managed to automatically do elite speak whenever I was trying to spell Bethesda, so I added threes to it. That was terrible. Uh, let's see here. Um, ba -ba. Testing, testing, testing. That should actually work. Um, yeah, that shouldn't be too bad. I'm tempted not to put video camera in because it could be a problem. Yeah, I think I'll not bother with the video camera, but I will put audio in so people can hear us talking over the top of this. Hopefully the audio won't be too loud and it won't be too disturbing for you guys on YouTube because I've got a few different pieces of hardware running. And hi to our YouTubers as well. Uh, you're welcome to the stream. You can actually be able to check out the broadcast on twitch.tv forward slash passage of skin as well. We're currently doing a bit of a test. So, to make this work and not have echo, I need to actually be using headphones for this a little bit uh, so what we're doing is just filling in time before Bethesda comes and entertains us with an amazing little conference um, and what I should do is actually change this broadcast name from uh, the EA conference to just a general pre E3 just give me a second to test that out Ooh. oh that sounds actually quite nice <laughs> so what we've got actually on to entertain us while we prepare for Bethesda is gone home one of the games that were available on ps plus this month from sony network um gone home walkathon that's been around for a fair few years it's been available on pc for a very long time i know a fair amount about the game but i've never actually played it myself so why why not give it a try because i have access to it let's get these headphones off while i fill in this little bit of paperwork in its own way Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Hey! Hey, uh, there we go. So, pre Bethesda game stream and playing Gone Home. There we go. That should be good and grand. Hopefully that should be working okay. We're doing okay? We're working all right? I think that looks okay. We're also got um, our normal, what the hell? What's going horribly wrong here with this? Okay. It would be interesting if that would not go full screen. I'm not too concerned about that. It just means I can actually see the uh, chat reasonably well there we go so i can actually see the chat on screen a lot easier because as you can see on the twitch speaking of chat that means the twitch chat by the way anybody who's watching the twitch chat is now available on screen so i can watch it while i'm actually playing rather than having to watch the little chat that's up there where you guys can talk amongst yourselves so, oh there's the audio on sounds pretty loud right so let's take a wee look at gone home while we fill our time until the next batch of E3 coverage. Yeah. One thing I might actually check is to make sure that there is...
Audio coming through the broadcast? Hmm. Is that affecting it at all? I don't think so. Um, hang on. That might be much better. No? Yes? No? Oh, right. So that could be interesting. Um, I may need you guys to check on the YouTube stream to see if we're having problems with Echo now. But um, I think there may be a fault with my plan here. Simply because the... Hmm. Because the stream... Has... What the hell is going on here? What? <sighs> trying to actually unmaximize the screen here while trying to actually open up something else. It's a little bit awkward. Um, I'm just going to actually play on and see what happens here because they, we may have some issues with the audio being a bit off. I think we can get around it. So take a quick look at the options. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Much we can control. Brightness, field of view. Let's increase that a bit and adjust the brightness just for the stream. Gameplay. Uh, sound. Bring up full. Language. Let's do it with subtitles and overlay text. And new game. Walk using L. Look around using R. Yep, figured that's what it was. Oh, modifiers? Um, disable map? Every door starts unlocked. So voice diaries, check in to see sounds. Voice over, no ending prompt will appear. Okay. Huh. That's a bit interesting. So you can actually modify it. This is, it kind of has that, that same feel, uh, because it is an interactive story, it has that same feel as almost like the, the portal levels where they had their ongoing commentary from developers, but other stuff. So, uh, yeah, we'll give it a start and see what happens. Ooh, high vintage tip. Hmm, someone's gone horribly awry here. Trying to get things to work properly. Well, that makes more sense. The Fulbright Company presents... Hi, Mom. Uh, so I got my ticket home from Europe. I get back on June 6th, but it's a really late flight because that was the cheapest, so it gets in at midnight. But don't worry, I'll get a shuttle from the airport so you don't have to pick me up. Like, really seriously, you don't have to. Okay, so, love you. See you soon. Bye. Sure, honey, we'll see you soon. So, on your way home, something horrible happens, I'm sure, to the rest of your family, and you're just going to investigate to find out what it was. Or was that all that you'd gone and seen yourself and you're actually like bringing an empty house which uh, had your cat but then it ran away because it didn't like you either. You know, it's, it's the horrible things that happen in life, you know? Okay. Caitlin Greenbrier. So I'm assuming that's me, that's my shit. It is a shitty dark day right there. So I am going to see if I can get in through this door. Okay, locked. I'll be there to see you, but it's impossible. Please, please don't go digging around trying to find out where I am. Don't want anyone to know. We'll see each other again someday. Don't be worried. I love you, Sam. Don't want anyone scored out mom and dad. Okay, Sam. Whatever the fuck's going on here. Locked. Alright, fine. Grab cup. Fuck, it's through the window. Ah! On doormat, hiding underneath the plant pot. Come on, everybody hides a key somewhere around the front of their house. 
It's a general rule of thumb, is it not? Yep. Open door. There's one in here. Okay. Yeah, it cost five ninety nine. Tossy duck. Can we throw it? I want to fucking. Eh, all right. Can't throw anything really. At least I've got some light. Ah, ice key. Fantastic. So, Sam, you couldn't stop us. Too late. Hello, flickery light. Ah, uh, god damn it, Sam. Oh, well, let's not turn the lights off. Leave them on. So, read an invoice. Uh, yeah. Destination Arbor Hill, Boone County. So, okay, so everybody's moved. Left you behind. Okay. Attach worksheet. Dear Katie. All right. So much has changed, even just since you've been away. We moved into this house. I'm in a new school. And my big sister being gone for a year doesn't make it any easier. It doesn't feel real. But I'm not going to let it phase me. I used to tell you everything, and if I can't do it in person, because you're off gallivanting around who knows where, I'll tell it to this journal. Okay, dokie okay, girl. I was talking to you. Left and green. Okay. <clears throat> Grand. So, at least we know where to go. So we don't really need to worry about where they've gone, because we can pretty much find them from the info that we already have. Mm-hmm, nothing in there. So, door? Yay, door's open. What's in here? Set the light up. Right, so mom is a conservationist. Um, this is a big pile of crap. What's... Yeah, I'm gonna put that back. Actually, hang on. What is in it? A novel traveling game for two to six players over the Alps. Is that where they've gone? Somewhere over the Alps? Eh, yeah, whatever. Don't need to worry about that. Right, let's see. Continuing on our search of the ground floor of the house. Uh, people's awards and medals. Pick up one of my trophies. Grab skull. God, I really don't care about your trophies, dear. So, every single time I turn on the light, I'm pretty sure there's got to be something to read nearby. Free letter! Yay! Dear Jan, it's so good to hear from you again. All this new house business sounds like quite the adventure. Remember the little dorm room we shared freshman year? When we were miserable fantasizing about our dream homes? I always said I wanted a mansion. You said you just wanted a house in the woods. Look who got both. Somebody up there likes you. I could use some of that magic. Send me some lot of numbers. I'll play them. Seriously! But I shouldn't be complaining about this good old split level we've had since Bob got transferred to Winnipeg. We just got new vinyl siding. Jealous yet? Let me know if you have trade places. So how are the girls doing? Has Katie left on her big European adventure yet? Speaking of jealous, right back soon. I miss you, Rumi. Carol. Oh, look at her script. That girl is unbelievably girly. Alright, close the fucking drawer. I have no idea what's going on here. So, benign drama ahead. Locked door. Uh, find the keys, find the keys. Oh, oh, movement speed's slow. Alright. Slow and deliberate. Makes sense. Grab marker. Go! Oh. Pencil. Aww. Okay. Oh no! So itinerary. Flight to Amsterdam. Okay, that was my stuff. Okay, so that was my itinerary for whenever I left. Any messages? Sam. Sam. Hello. That's me. Sam. Sam, where are you? Right. Really? I need to talk to you. That's Kitty talking? Please be there. That's me. 
Hi, Mom. Uh, so I got my ticket home from Europe. I get back on June 6th, but it's a really late flight because that was the cheapest, so it gets in at midnight. But don't worry, I'll get a shuttle from the airport so you don't have to pick so me up. Like, really seriously, you don't have to. Okay, so, love you. See you soon. Bye. I am puzzled as fuck here? That makes no sense. And Daniel from the old neighborhood called. He wants to come see the new house. Call him back. Mom, Daniel's a total weirdo. The only reason I ever hung out with him in the first place is he had a Nintendo when we were little. Okay. Uh, fair enough. So, essentially, the first couple messages with Kitty being sad and begging to hear from somebody. I want to dial 911! Ugh. Right, let's see if there's another door I can open. Oh, bathroom! Light switch! Light switch! Light switch! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nothing of importance. Uh, how to win prizes, Stephen King, get published, the secret, blank page, blah 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 blah. Alright, author magazine. I'm gonna put that back. Okay. What is this? Quick fix. None of this is going to be a quick fix, kiddo. Um. Get on you for being hygienic. Push the toilet. Then use the toilet. Then wash your hands. It's weird that there's no mirror in the bathroom. Eh, whatever. So, run this way. That'll be the door. Yep, it is. Turn on the lights. Okay. Welcome, new student. We hope you are as excited about your first day at Goodfellow High School as we are. Please be sure to bring the following when you first of day of classes so that you can get right into the swing of things. Blah, 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 list of stuff, bring combination lock, money for lunch, positive attitude, principal of the school. Alright, so typical stuff. Ah, see, somebody actually... <laughs> everything but the positive attitude is marked off. It's kind of difficult to have a positive attitude. Oh my god, you are so lucky you finished high school before we moved into this house. So, it's the first day of school, and there I am, introducing myself to the class. And I say that I just moved into the house on Arbor Hill. All of a sudden, every kid in the room turns and just stares like I suddenly transformed into a mutant. It just stood there, pushing pretty hard for a rewind button. Because now maybe nobody knows my name, but they all know who I am. The Psycho House Girl. <sighs> Great. Wait, what? And whose picture is this? Is this mom or DeSoto? Okay. Oscar Masan. Um, right. Has nothing to do with anything, I suppose. Doc Masan died. James Clark 31. Okay. Right, well, that didn't mean anything, but I'm curious about that photograph. I don't remember that photograph. Nothing in there. Which makes me think. Is there one in there? Can't see anything at all. Lights are on, but nobody's home, folks. So, no, I don't want to pull a string. I want to see what else is in here. Nope, 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 nope. Nothing. Alright. Check my location in the house. Alright, fine. Oop, oh, very dark in here. Lights on! Daytime! Nighttime! Daytime! Nighttime! Alright, leave this on. Highlighter pans. It was writing. Lose a disc, compact disc player, pricing. I'd say the jack of all trades is a master of none. I have to disagree. Mastery is not a question of specialization, but certainness of purpose and dedication to craft. If you happen to be in the market for a combination LC LDCD player, we're glad to know that Pioneer seems to share this particular. Oh, God. 
Oh God. Do we remember the laser disc compact disc players? I mean, the, the big thing about um, making this for an audience that are probably under the age of 18, we're gonna have no fucking idea what a laser disc is for a start. So nothing important in there. Nothing in there. Bring binder. And put it back. Nothing in there. Nothing in there. Nothing in there. Then all these. Chinese, Japanese, Lebanese. Yeah, okay. What if JFK wasn't JFK? Time to dial something. You can do better. So I'm assuming these are all uh, ideas of a book. Yeah. I imagine that's actually ideas of a book that the parent was working on in some way, shape, or form. Not the conservationist mother, but the author father. Oh, combination listed. Yeah, not in there. I'm sure we will find something much more interesting in there. Probably a gun or something. Um, probably not going to find it just yet. A couple pages. Open his eye. John Russell opened his eyes and saw them. The stars. Twinkling as if he were lying on the grass in his family's yard in Massachusetts. Even though the place was a million miles away. No. He blinked the sleep from his eyes, looking through the carbon-reinforced safety glass of the space station Archimedes. Yes, he was a long way from home. But the future needed him. John Russell's head swam. He felt incredibly drunk despite not having touched a drop in hours. He vomited onto his feet, his bare feet. He stared for a moment, processing his sick flecked toenails, scanning up his bare shins, bare knees. We were... We was completely naked. We was completely naked. He looked up and met the eyes of gorgeous blonde woman wearing a tight polymer fiber tunic. The fabric that stranded the seams to contain her generous bosom was emblazoned with the phrase matter transference operator. Then he passed out. John Russell had crossed the gap, the gap in time. Only messages has passed, has passed before Beofra. But now a man. They needed him now more than ever. Changing the past was no longer good enough. The instructions formed the council had been clear. What to procure, what to construct from it, how to assemble it. So he made the machine, how to transport him bodily across time. And now he stood there on the bridge of the star ship, Archimedes, command of the vessel. Because only he who had saved the present death's nets life twice before ye could helm the nave crew that to their destiny the fate of the galaxy wow oh god that actually made me feel a little bit sick just to read that um whoever john russell is can stay in the fucking future mm, not a great writer probably writes technical stuff instead the wiring in the house is technically up to all safety and amperage requirements. However, multiple layers of wiring have been added to the structure over the last hundred years. Blah, 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 blah. After the will bring to green bar, since there are no safety concerns, these issues will not be addressed. Happy days! Uh, lights blink out for no reason. Pressure on floorboards and door frames disrupt circuits wired directly behind the surface. Probably reworking the electrical... Oh, okay, so that explains why the flickering wind lights. Shit. I am not surprised by that. Black Cat Electrical Company? Jesus Christ. <laughs> that doesn't bode well in any way, shape, or form. Well, at least we know what date this is like, kind of around about 94, 95. Makes sense with the laser disc references. Alright. Nothing in there. Nothing in number B. Alright, so we pretty much looked everywhere. Oh, except for the book. Which is... Benjamin Allman, The Killing of JFK, A Theory. You've seen the movie, now discover the proof. Back and to the left. Back and to the left. Back and to the left. Alright, moving on into the next room. Oh god, it's so dark in here. Lights! Aziz! Light! Okay. Oh, the storm's getting shitty. Fresh! I was a teenage drag queen! Meal gears, how to subvert it? Sir Holtz, not gathering moss. Oh, wow. It feels like I know that person on the cover. <laughs> oh, that's how you crunch. Oh, that's a learning. Okay. Mm Must be an open window in here somewhere. Oh, no, it's because we're standing in the window. Uh, interesting book. 
a stranger under my roof. Eh. How to parent a teen. Dear Terence, David asked me to write you regarding the reviews you've been submitting in the last few months. Frankly, they're becoming more trouble than they're worth from an editing standpoint. There's a word limit. It's your job to stay under it, not mine to cut back to it. Even though it's becoming harder and harder to weed out the tangents and non-sequiturs from the usable copy without heavy rewrites. The readers of Home Theater Aficionado want to hear about the quality and value of the hardware, not ruminations on your childhood. David's known you for a long time and he's the boss, so I'm giving you one more shot on his say-so. You should write him a nice note thanking him for his patience and generosity. Later, uh, look through your old stuff and start submitting reviews like that again. Then everyone will be happy. Brent Kurtwood, Reviews Editor, Home Theater Aficionado Magazine. Signed, not read, but dictated. Oh, cool. 0451. Bam! Uh, that's what we're looking for. Oh... Four, five, one. Ta da! Kimbellic and Wise Attorneys at Law, 20, uh, 21 Fort Street, Boone County, Boone County, Oregon. Dear Mr. Massan, Please find and close your original document and a typed copy for your records. The notarized copy has been filed at our offices. Thank you for entrusting our firm with this important matter. Sincerely, Jeffrey Wise, Kubelik and Wise Attorneys at Law. Will entrustment of Oscar Massan. I, Oscar Massan, possessing full competence of mind and memory, and after full survey of valued items to my name, do here I declare this my last will and testament. The following shall hold true upon my passing. 1. I declare that I am a lifelong resident of Boone County, that I am unmarried and have no children. I declare I have no outstanding debts to my name, to any creditors, living or dead. I do hereby bequeath every item of value which I may die possessed, including the dwelling and surrounding acres located at 1 Arbor Hill, as well as any and all personal property and monetied accounts, to Terence L. Greenbrier Jr. of Ellis County. In the event that said Terence L. Jean Greenbrier Jr. should predecease me, then and in such event the bequeath to him shall fall in the same as bequeathed to his children, as ordered by age and competence as steward of the estate. I subscribe my name to this will, this 13th day of August 1973, at the offices of Boone County Court Registrar, Oscar Massan. Okay. So his will and testament changes from page to page. Oh, right. Why was it all on one page? And then... Oh, right, this is the typed up version. And then his handwritten version. That was also attached. Well, nice of him to do. So that's how we end up coming in possession of the house. A bit odd, isn't it? Man who has no connection to the family previously. I need to go back and look at that guy's, um... Uh, well, not his last will and testament, but his obituary. Anything of important? Okay, grab lid. Oh, God. Oh. Oh, my. The accidental pariah, Terence L. Greenbrier. Whoa! Gentlemen, the magazine for men, February 1989. Japan's bloody war in dolphins. Moscow by night. Drugs, prostitution, the mafia. The new rules of love. Ladies in the ring. The woman of wrestling. <laughs> Gentlemen, the magazine, 1989. Let's see what else he has in there. All right, put you back there. Put you back there. Put you back there. Oh, oh, we no more nudie mags. Oh. Oh, this is a point. Okay, is there anything here? Ooh, there is. Accidental per the accidental patriarch villain ambassador messiah, the occasional sometime unreliable savior hero, a year in the mountain come down from the mountain. The accidental prophet, the unreliable prophecy, the accidental prophet. The ac oh right, I get it now. The accidental, the accidental prophet, the accidental prophet. Yeah, things that seem meaningful to you then, but not really now. Okay, uh, so Dad, did you go through a phase of no work and all play, make Jack something something? God damn it, Dad! Oh, seriously, I want to throw something. 
Ooh, what's that up there? Ooh, dead secret stash. I'm put that up there. Um, anything worth stealing? Shit, Dad. It's creepy in here. Telephone directory, 1995. Oh, must be so out of date by now. Um, right. So that's where we came in. I need to look at your man's uh, obit again, just in case. Someone weird. Uh, born in September 1983, in the house that would become his home for his rest of his life. Decades preceding his passing, he was seldom seen outside of his home. Uh, service held. Uh, his nephew, Terence. All right. Oh, cool. So that's the reason why we're related. Fucking hell, that freaked me out. Boone County, Dawn County, Tecumseh County, and Wistaria County. Residents are strongly urged to stay indoors and secure all windows Whoa. and doors. Flood conditions are expected at lower elevations. Oh, cool. Tired of things of X-Files. <laughs> That's kind of cool. I like the idea. Grab soda can. Yeah, you can sit there and be noisy as long as there's actually something other than storm outside. This is a severe weather warning. The Northwest Weather Service reports high huh? winds and torrential rain. Let me stand up to see what the hell this is. Following counties. Austin County. Boone County. Bratmobile. Tecumseh County. Okay. Residents are strongly urged to well, obviously they ate pizza before they went, so can't be gone all but that long. At lower okay, so TV listings. Oh, nice. Classic TV of 1995. Family Matters. Unsolved Mysteries. Uh, Mantis, not really. So one of these Family Matters didn't like it. Unsolved Mysteries. Classic Diagnosis of Murder. Is that, what's the theme tune? Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Uh, Mantis Lucy Show. Uh, hang on a second. Am I losing myself on the screen here? I think it might be a little bit of an odd issue with the live stream going on here, so I need to fix that technically. Give me a second, guys. I'll be right back. What conditions are expected at lower elevations? This is a severe weather warning. The Northwest Weather Service reports high winds and torrential rain conditions affecting the following counties. Austin County, Boone County, Dawn County, Tecumseh County, and Wistaria County. Residents are strongly urged to stay indoors. That was a little bit odd. For some reason my camera decided to do a little freak out and stop uh, showing correctly on screen. I don't know what that was about. Let me check and see. I think they may, um... I'm currently using on it, and it's actually making us freak out a little bit. This is a do 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 do. West Weather Service reports high winds. Well, obviously that didn't work. Affecting the following counties: Austin County, Boone County, Dawn County, Tecumseh County, and Wistaria County. Residents are strongly urged to stay indoors and secure oh, all God. windows and doors. Flood conditions are expected at lower elevations. This is a severe weather warning. The Northwest Weather Service reports high winds and torrential rain conditions huh. affecting the following counties. Austin County, Boone County, Dawn County, Tecumseh County, and Wistaria County. Hmm. Residents the similarity is a little bit of a problem just because of the light. And secure all windows and doors. Flood conditions are expected at lower elevations. Hmm. 
This is a severe weather warning. The Northwest Weather Service reports high winds and torrential rain conditions affecting the following counties. Austin County, Boone County, Dawn County, Tacoma County. Okay. It's not quite as smooth key as I was hoping for, but it works. Secure all windows and doors. Flood conditions are expected at lower elevations. Eh. Best I can do. Best I can do for now, anyway. So essentially, it's a matter of actually switching the key around and probably putting better lighting sources that are actually like keying out that green screen that are behind me. So, this is a go back to what we were doing best. The Northwest Weather Service reports high winds and torrential rain conditions in the Dawn County, Tacoma County. And Wistaria County. Residents are strongly urged to stay indoors and secure all windows mm -hmm. and doors. Flood conditions are expected. Ba -da -ba 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 I don't know why I've got the theme tune to that show stuck in my head now because I'm not going to be able to get rid of it. This is a severe weather warning. And the gone weather home. This reports high winds and torrential rain conditions affecting the following counties. Austin County, Boone County, Dawn County, Tacoma County, and Wistaria County. Residents are strongly urged to right, stay There we go. So I was doing a little audio test there as well. They say to see if the uh, stream was playing catch up, but um, obviously I had issues. So we'll set ourselves back down here again. And I'll put that aside. So that's not a problem. We can continue. So there was nothing to be seen in the TV listings. So, uh, what? Oh, coaster. Uh, open drawer. Anything of importance? Nope. Nothing there. Nothing in the caddy to the side. So they had the duvet out for actually. Ooh. Hello, Fort. Uh, find the truth behind the stories that were unfamiliar from our pagan ancestors? Yeah, I really don't care about that. <clears throat> all windows and doors. Ooh, Blood highlighter. Are expected at lower uh, is there something in here we're reading? Nope. Hmm. Wait, we can't light the candles? Oh, shit. We can. Uh, there's no things left in it. Wait. Where's this from? This is a severe weather warning. Oh god, it's annoying. I actually have to try and find an actual light. Oh wait, hang on. Yeah, I'll do that after a second. Check this first. Uh, uh, there's nothing written on any part of it. Oh, that's worthless. Yay, the fan works! Woo! Fan death! That's how the whole family went. They are all killed by a fan. Uh, time Machine, Fantastic Voyage, classics! Airplane Moonraker. Wow, they actually have a real X Files JFK. Blade Runner director's cut. Yes, there was director's cut from the 1990s. The Andromeda Strain. Wow, these people actually have a pretty decent movie collection. <laughs> Terry, hi man, how you been? I know you're a published author and everything now, but my editor at Hi-Fi Aficionado has too much review work to go. And he's looking for another freelancer. Naturally, I thought of you. You were saying in your last letter how much of a pain to be trying to find a publisher for your latest work of literature. And uh, writing stair reviews is dead simple. So sit at home with a glass of scotch, listen to some records, and write up how it sounds. And then get paid. I've included some issues of the mag to use as examples if you're interested. Send some writing samples to my editor, and um, I'll tell you my, your old college chum Mike sent you. Here's the address. Div Cupping, blah, 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 blah. Hey, Mike, you sound like a nice guy. Wait, what? February 3rd, 1978? Oh, wow. 1978? Um... Accidental Savior? John Russell knows the presence, life hangs in the balance. But who would believe him? Not just another James Bond. The writer of The Mummy. It's a... Nicholas Wolf. Wow. Okay. So, huh. He was a big time author in the early 70s? That's a bit mad, actually. 
the 1970s and he hasn't actually like he this is a severe so he was a big time author in the 1970s and he obviously had what a field second book what's in this case oh hang on you know that feeling where the first moment you see someone it's like they have a big gold star around them and you oh. have to get to know them well there's this girl i think she's a senior she's usually dressed kind of punk but sometimes i see her in this like army uniform She's always drawing in this notebook, looking so intense. I Boy, had Christ, no Zoe. idea how I would ever, like, have an excuse to talk to her. Till I noticed she and her friends hang out and play Street Fighter at the 7-Eleven every day after school. Oh, tip. Insert tip. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hi, Terry. Close, please find a Pioneer CLD D703 unit with remote and cables. We need a half page review for the October issue, so that gives you about two weeks to get us the copy printed. So, there's stuff like you gave us on the CLD D502. It's a copy player, so we'll check it CD playback with a few discs as well as a laser disc, and they want to definitely hit the signal to noise ratio and toss link so. Wait, what? Why did the text disappear? And then tossing stuff to head to, for high end buyers. Looking forward to your take on it. Enjoy the unit. That's obviously what I read him writing about previously. So let's set a fight. That's Bond's old workbook. <laughs> Keep it playing. What's this? Read a story. The Heaven at the Edge of the World. Samantha Greenbrier, Grade Two. Story: The Turtle People, Part One. Captain Allegra looked off at the ocean and went on forever, or so it seemed. Someday she would find the edge and get to the paradise there. Then she heard a cannon fire. Boom! It was the black pirate ship. She yelled, I thought we lost him at Horse Island. The first mate said, looks like you thought too soon. The black ship came up along the side. Captain Black himself came out of the deck of the black ship. He yelled to Captain Allegra, You're never gonna find the edge. There ain't no paradise. And your father was a liar. Captain Allegra yelled back, Then why do you keep following us, you imbecile? The first mate yelled out, We'll stop you, Captain Black. We'll find the edge of the world and you'll see her father was no liar. The battle kept going until Captain Allegra's ship got away. Now, now west, she said, and the ship sailed towards the sunset. Aw, that's a pretty good uh, goddamn story, kiddo. And you probably wanted to be just like your papa. Huh. Sammy. So, I don't like the fact that we can see all these tips, but I can't actually do anything with any of them. Okay. Playback, fine. Playback, fine. Ugh. Let's see. Nothing here to look at, really. All right, so that's that room cleared out. Where next? Ooh, double paper. Hey, are you that new girl, Sam? I'm Tommy. I'm at the back row, so you wave if you get this, and right back. Hi, Tommy. Yes, I'm Samantha, and yes, I'm new. What's up? I just thought since you're new, maybe you could use a friend. Why is the text not coming up on screen? Uh, that's really, really fucking annoying at the moment. I can't barely read the handwriting in this game. Could be a friend, blah, blah, blah. Ask somebody if you don't mind or do you mind? Yes, no. No, I don't mind. What did you want to ask? Well, it's just your uncle who went psycho. Does it run in the family? Oh, fuck. Fuck these kids! 
Fucking assholes. Anything else to see? No. Fucking kid asshole pricks in schools. Coupons. Coupons for what? Huh. Ain't got no money. Ain't got a... Oh, United States Department of Agriculture, U.S. National Forestry Manual, Northwest Region. Prescribe burn procedures and precautions. Burn it! Burn it all! And nothing else underneath. Okie dokie. Another room. Another light switch. Another lamp. Okie dokie. More! Thank fucking Christ! Oh! Give me the bourbon! Alright, we need to pour ourselves a drink here. Uh, we need shots. Shots, shots, shots. Shots, shots, shots. Pour. Pour shots. Take shot. Drink shot! And it all feels better now. Alright. Close that door. Grab another bottle. Nope, that one's not... Nope, we're not drinking the rum. Uh, there's nothing to... Oh, wait, hang on. What's in here? Oh yeah, accidental pariah. Marty, it's 1976. Dear Mr. Greenbrier, I write to inform you that unfortunately Mercury Books will be unable to publish your follow-up to The Accidental Pariah. Despite the low seals of The Accidental Se Savior, we went ahead with publication of the second book in hopes of the John Russell series catching on. However, seals of the second book have in fact been lower than the first, and so our stewardship of the series must end here. It has been a pleasure working with you as, our, as your publisher, and we wish you and John Russell the best in future endeavors. David Fripp, publisher Mercury Books, Inc. Well, shit. Books didn't do well. I understand that's why we took on the job of reviewing hi-fis. Ooh. That's better. I'm having a bad, bad time. Now that it's happened, I just came. Yeah. Pretty rip. Samantha Greenbrier, 9994. Below our two stories events are all out of order. Get a sheet of lined paper, write reproductive system worksheet 6 at the top, then choose one of the two stories A and B and rewrite it. Begin with the title and your name. Find its topic sentence. Okay, so the menstrual cycle travels through the fallopian tube, the ovary releases the ovum. But two weeks later, since the lining of the tube does not need for pregnancy, it comes out through the vagina. VAGINA! Uh, it's incredibly how, incredible how the female body knows how to prepare for pregnancy. If the egg doesn't meet, meet the sperm, it dissolves. While the ovum is overlapping, the line of the uterus is getting in thick and soft. Another ovum starts to develop in one of the ovaries, and the process begins again! An ovum starts to develop. I am producing the testicles. I go from the vast difference to the urethra, the life of a sperm thal. I go through the cervix and the uterus into the fallopian tubes in search of an eggshell. So... Yeah, so... Whoa! <laughs> oh, Sam. Sam, you're awesome. Oh, I wish, I wish the text was showing on screen properly. <laughs> so, instead of giving an answer that actually, like, answers the menstrual cycle, she writes an entire, like, chapter of a book. Oh, this is a woman with my own heart. <laughs> Teacher writing, see me, at the bottom. I was like... Yes. Yes, that is exactly what I would write. Plus, I would have probably taken the menstrual cycle story as well. So, um, yeah. Fair play to you, Sam. I like you. I like the cut of your jib. What's this one? World history? Fuck that. <laughs> I'll always shit at history. Okay. Uh, the Dave Brubeck Quartet. Nice. Um, other than the booze and records, what's in here? Nan? Nan. Is there a light switch for this room? That light isn't working. Oh, I find it weird whenever there's actually like instances of an individual one just not working. It makes me think there's something that needs to be moved. And darkened room. Light switch! Daytime! Daytime! Alright, what have we got here? Samantha, please give this to your mother. Thank you for having... 
star Danny over to your new home. He has missed having his friend Samantha in the neighborhood very much. Danny asked if he could lend Samantha his Nintendo Street Fighting tape, and I gave my permission. The need to depend less time he needs to spend less time with these games anyway. No hurry returning it. Let Samantha know that she is welcome back to our house at any to visit any time. Sincerely Mary. Okay. When you live in one place your whole life, your next door neighbor is kind of like your default friend. And Daniel only got weirder over the years. So moving away has been a good excuse to, like, not see him anymore. But he did always have the good Nintendo games. Maybe I'll give him a call. Yeah, Street Fighter on the NES was absolute garbage. So I'm assuming they're talking about Super Nintendo, considering it's like the mid-90s. So it has to be Street Fighter 2. Timelines! Knowing them by being a geek! Okie dokie, what have we got here? Put it back, put it back, put it back, put it back! Lip balm, put it back! Read note. Katie, please tell mom and dad sorry about the stuff that's missing. Sam. What? What the fuck does that mean? Snake eyes! The fact that there's nothing but highlighter pens in the entire house. Why is it that you just find highlighter pens in every part of the house? It never actually makes sense where. Hi, Lonnie. So if you want to come over to my house still this afternoon, that would be cool. I can drive. It's kind of far, but I can drive you home too, so hopefully that's fine. Right back and leave this in my locker if you still want to, and we can meet in the parking lot after 6th. Samantha. Yeah, I'm totally in. See you there. I'm going to kick your butt. Get ready. Hadouken! So you know what they say about the best light plans of mice and men? It's all for yeah, it turns out it applies to Street Fighter 2. <laughs> at least I worked up the courage to walk into the 7-Eleven and ask for a turn, but all that practice at home did not exactly translate in the wild. So after I was finished getting my butt kicked, I followed them outside while they smoked. And that was when she asked me if I was that psycho house girl. But then she said she's always really wanted to see the psycho house. Her name is Lonnie. She's coming over tomorrow. Well, that's cool, Sam. You made friends. Making friends over a bout of getting your ass beaten, Street Fighter. Pretty much that's how most of my friendships started. Kitty, please, whatever you've found, don't tell Mom and Dad the attic. Oh, God damn it. Got to backtrack now and find something. I don't like these locked doors whenever I actually cannot find anything else to open. Also, who the fuck is this? Alright, because I'm not seeing any information on this otherwise, and I do see DeSoto. So... Oh, it's probably Mom, isn't it? We're in the ranger service of some sort. Okay. So, anything of importance in here? Nope. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Alright, so where have we been? I'm in here. That door's locked. That's locked. Let's continue our exploration. Yeah, so just double checking. Sam, me, mom, dad. Okay. Nothing weird here. Um. Right. So I need to open a door. I'm gonna close that door. Uh. Maybe saw an underneath shit that I can lift up. I already read that one. Oh yeah. Cause I didn't notice those before. Oh, eh. 
Uh, eh, nothing. Oh, well, goddammit. So There's something to do with the attic. I'm assuming I have to get into the attic. Nope. 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 Well, shit. That one's locked too. Nothing down the air ventilation side. Oh, fuck. Oh, yeah, I haven't gone upstairs yet. Mom! Dad! Anybody home? God damn it, don't put on any lights. Uh, no, I don't need a pack of cards. And uh, nope. Nope. Oh, newspaper! Control burn schedule for Boone County. Uh, yep, so plumes of smoke will rise above the place. Uh, this was in October 1984. We're obviously in 1995, so something happened in the past. And it's been a year. I've been gone, but yeah, that probably obviously happened just before I left. Nothing to be concerned about. It's all good. It's all safe and sound. Where the hell is the light switch? Aha! Okay. Uh, cooking classes, ballroom dancing, take ap apron, campus breathe. I can't tell what's happening on Mondays. Couples. Couples something or other. Oh, right. Couples, couples bowling? And ballroom dancing? And couples ballroom dancing cancelled? Cooking class. Check the big meal for Terry and... Cook the big meal for Terry and Sam. Right. On the Friday. So no ballroom dancing. Must have been falling out with each other over time. Alright. Grab comb. Isn't this a nice comb? Temporary personal transfer. Bruce Pendleton, home of per head of personnel, state forestry service. Today in the upcoming prescribed bone operation, the ranger will expertise in the procedure is being transferred to the station at Flintlock National Forest, effective 9294. Please see attached personnel file. The overseeing officer at Flintlock Forestry Station, senior current preservationist Janice Greenbrier, is charged with the supervision of transferred personnel. The duration of transfer will be based upon performance evaluation as well as the recommendation of the overseeing officer. Signed, Bruce Pendleton. Alright, Bruce. Possibility that you got my mother hurt? You did? You're dead, man! Nobody hears my mama. Okay, so light switch. Why is there light? Somebody needs to fix these bulbs. You and you. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. For Sam. Oh. Love thing. Tab. Cherry bomb. So a PRDC, some special fuck your fans, Polaroid baby, um, panic, bitch theme, Richard Cool Schmool, just on it. Whoa, whoa! You're gonna love this one. And Queenie, cool. Alright. So that was what that's what it was. It was just a mixtape. It's weird hanging out with girls. Daniel was around ever since I was little, and other girls? I don't know. But being around Lonnie is like instantly just right. I gave her the grand psycho house tour and took my revenge on Super Nintendo. And it was like, I don't know. I finally found someone I feel normal around. I drove her home and she gave me this tape and said, You have got to listen to this. I haven't stopped playing it since. Huh. To whom it may concern, I, Samantha Greenbrier, am 17 years old and therefore an independent, fully functional human being. The fact that you still forbid me from going into the city on my own is frankly absurd. Compare with Katie, who is only three years older than me, and yet you allowed her to go all the way across an ocean to another continent on her own. I just wanted to spend an evening 
on the normal, totally safe setting on my own, like a human being. And since you might also remember that I have my own car now, you can't really stop me. Warmest regards, your daughter, Samantha. Wow. Samantha, shut the fuck up. Uh, we all remember being like that as a teen, right? I mean, we were all an asshole at some point. Really? To our parents? I think it's actually like a mandatory allotment of fuck you, I'm a teenager. Ooh! Stripe the screen. Um, a lot of stuff has been moved. Ooh, right. Except, yay, more music. Ah, no. Bam! You better play. Yeah, what is this? Cool schmool. Yeah, that wasn't the best one. I think the other tip was better. Ooh, what's done here? Um, Chun Li moves. Hold back. Push forward. Press punch. Lightning kick. Kick, 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 kick. Hold down. Push up. Kick. Air stomp. Down. Medium kick. Yes, that air stomp was a classic. That's one of the most important moves in all of Street Fighter. Ooh, magic eye picture. I'm crossing my eye. Yeah, I can't see anything. Yep, perfect 90s nostalgia. Can't see, sweet fuck all. <laughs> Aw, she liked her stickers. Ooh, more games. What's this one? Journey of Crystal? Ooh, Final Fantasy ripoff. Put you over there. And what are you? Oh, I was so, like from a distance that looked like Earthworm Jim. Super Spitfire. Well, it had to be super. Oh, right, by the way, anybody in the UK, these are Super Nintendo cartridges. Just this is how the Americans had them. We didn't have those. We had ours looking more like the Famicom, the Japanese ones. If you didn't know already, just a little bit of retro nostalgia for those who don't know what 1995 was anywhere like. Uh, oh, wait. Huh? I haven't heard that much to drink, Jody Foster. How many fingers am I holding up? You'd better not have been reading my secret diary again. Uh, here you go, Mitten, have some pate. Rose! Meow. Okay, kiddo. You want to believe? Uh, well, x files was big in the 90s. Steggy? Steggy! It is Steggy. Aww. I love Stegosauruses. That's what I had as a, like, ooh, magazine. All <laughs> right, that's right. Her Cobain. Yep. 1995. Memories. It's in Africa, Soul Asylum Life. Ooh, Soul Asylum. Shit, yeah. I completely forgot about Soul Asylum. Yeah. Can't even tell the music from uh, the first Clerks movie. Eddie Vedder, Weezer, Veruca Salt. Max and Martine wanted for the murder of Street Edge. Huh, cool. Freaking completely forgot about Soul Asylum. I never get what I want, but I want. But I know I'm happy to die trying. This is the one me and my dad are building want to go for a ride when it's done. Okay. You for what? 1965. Fork! Stabby stabby! We have a weapon now! Ha 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 I can break the lock with this motherfucker. Sonic Boom 94? Buck 09! Danny Warhol's offspring! Social Distortion, Lisa Lua, Boss Tones! Yeah! Oh man! Holy shit, my childhood's like flying all over the fuck of this. I, think, I can understand why people love this, because the people about my age playing this are going like, Oh fuck, I remember. I, I could probably get all those CDs out of my fucking collection. I wonder if I have them on MP3. 
Uh, right, let's see what else she's got in her room. What's this? Sam, I think the creative writing track would be perfect for you. Mrs. Bell. Oh, pre-college. Okay. Well, I suppose that makes a little bit of sense. Hmm. English creative writing. Three students from each track will be offered a full scholarship. Ooh, full scholarship. Bitch, please. Tidy up your room. Don't eat your food in your room. Uh, Alright, just gonna check the messages here, folks. Just be right back. So, viewing comments. Get those CDs, boys. <laughs> uh, classic CDs. My name is Boston's uh, The Rascal King. Yeah, that was my jam, man, as a kid. Anything else to find here? Memory board, nail polish. Ooh. Yeah, it probably is a book series. Nice. Good selection on your shelf. Hmm. Good fellow. Right, let's see. Is there anything else? Is this actually photographs? Dollars, anything? Hairbrush. Sock. <laughs> Another sock. Oh, nice. Does that door open? Yes, it does. So I need to find her goddamn uh, combination here somewhere. Board game? Oh my god, those dating board games with the fucking phone. Oh, Jesus. So dreamy. Do you like sports? Would you introduce me to your friend? Are you busy Friday? Oh man, you have to check out Board Games. It's a really, really good uh, series where uh, James Rolfe playing board games. And he does a, a one with a dream phone, which is really, really enjoyable. Do you like sports? The King's Labyrinth, Chapter 2. Fraying Threads. Captain Allegra, still in her flowing skirt and sturdy jerkin, descended the single shining thread into the lower cavern of the labyrinth. She and the first mate, on their own now, grew closer to the grow. Grow? Grow! The throne room of the dead immortal king of the island. The first mate slid down the line onto the stone floor. She swept chalky bone dust from the front of her canvas trousers and looked up at Allegra. The silken thread, nigh unbreakable thanks to the enchanted moss that inhabited the island, trailed behind leading their way back to the entrance. From further into the labyrinth, a moaning began to echo. The moaning grew louder and clearer. They turned into words from some ancient language they could not understand. The king's cursed voice. The hairs on Captain Allegra's arms stood on end. She looked back at the first mate, whose eyes remained locked on the blackness of the passage, for a moment too long before noticing the captain's gaze. The first mate nodded silently ahead, following the king's ghostly song deeper and deeper into the labyrinth. They came upon a rocky gap spilling forth out of the worldly blue light. The great basin of the dead king's throne room lay below. Skeletal and rotten robes, the king was hunched over the blue orb, tapping, topping his royal scepter. Shadows of his bony fingers danced on the walls like ghouls as he sang. Wailing souls flowed in one by one through the cracks in the cave walls, pulled into the orb, causing it to grow brighter and brighter. Behind the king, a long staircase hewn from rock led down into the chamber from a passage at the top. Allegra said, We have the advantage in numbers. I will draw his attention, and then you... But the first maid interrupted, No, I am smaller and quicker, and you know I am dealing with mystic energies like these. I will circle to the other side, get the king's attention, and lead him on a merry chase. She held up the silk line, all traced by this invincible thread, of course. Allegra said, This is a good plan, but perhaps we should go together. The first maid shook her head, You know this is our best chance. Don't be afraid for me. They gasped hands and exchanged three tight squeezes, their palms growing warm. The first mate tried to tie the shining thread to the belt of her trousers, gave a quick salute and wink, and lashed, dashed off. Allegra waited, staring vigilantly across at the top of the stairs where the first mate was to appear. The king continued his... Wait! No! No! The singing stopped. The king turned and began walking up the stairs. Allegra wanted to call out, to do anything, to stop the first mate from running headfirst into danger. She tried tugging on the line to signal her. No use. The king was nearly at the top of the stairs when the first mate burst through the passageway. She skidded to a stop. Even from across the yawning basin, Allegra could see the first mate's eyes grow wide. She turned and ran. 
So in his undead power, the king left the ground, levitating, gliding behind her with distressing speed. From some dark passage much too far away, Allegra heard the first mate scream. She was already running towards the sound. The lion in Allegra's hand went taunt, then it shuddered. It fell slack to the stone floor as Allegra ran. She was gathering line, twisting it around her arm. She came to its end. The unbreakable thread dangled limply, its end shredded and frayed in her hand. She tossed it to the ground and ran, ran, ran. Run, run, run away. Well, that's actually pretty good writing, Sam. Seriously, Sam actually should be doing uh, short stories. What's this? Oh, that's our trapper keeper. Why can't I open this? Damn it. Holy Bible. Ah, get it off me. Okay, so uh, t-shirts, hoodies, clothes. Lots of interest here. Um, to the next room. Oh, wait. Good fellow high school disciplinary referral. Student name Yolanda De Soto. Yolanda? Mr. Benchley observed Miss De Soto, De Soto wearing a t-shirt with an unacceptable image on the front. A large bear can labeled Paps Blue Ribbon. Miss De Soto was sent to the guidance counselor's office. Action taken. Mr. Soto was given the option to turn her shirt inside out, change into a shirt from her gym locker, or be suspended for the rest of the day. Mr. Soto chose suspension. Her father was called, but there was no answer and no answering machine. Mr. Soto must return this form tomorrow, signed by her father. Uh, student signature. Oh, Lonnie DeSoto. All right, Yolanda. Lonnie. Okay. Hmm. So, I have a feeling. So, that picture we saw of DeSoto was Lonnie. And Lonnie being sent to military school? You think? Possibly. That's what makes sense, doesn't it? Lights on! Cabinet open! Quick fix! I need a present toothpaste! Cinnamon! Ugh. Oh god! Cinnamon? No, man! No! No, man! I, I think you get your ass kicked for something like that! Lonnie rules? Oh, you really got a kiss of the, um... Life is Strangers, don't you? Pregnancy kit, pregnancy kit, pregnancy kit. Where the fuck's the pregnancy kit? Oh, well, that's just is useful. Hey, okay, is that? I'm glad they went to the bother of actually doing a model for one single tampon. Fair play to them. No paper to read. Um, oh, whoa, what the fuck? Oh, right. His red right hand. <sighs> ah, so that was actually a horror. Lonnie thing. brought her hair dye over today. She said, I need to fix these roots. Think you could help? Dying hair is weirdly intimate. I don't know if I've touched someone else's scalp before. That's pretty intimate, right? It felt intimate. We looked into the mirror together after, and I expected her to say something about how it looked crappy, or good, or whatever. But that's when she said, You're so beautiful. And she was looking at me. Right in that moment, I wanted to say something. But I waited. And the moment was gone. Yeah, we've got a full-on case of Life of Strangers going on here. I do not disapprove. Hey Sam, do you want to go see Pulp Fiction? Uh, for school at the Coliseum. Came out last weekend and Todd won't shut up about it, so either it's good or we can make fun of him for liking it. My mom's supposed to cook dinner for us tonight for a change, but I can just stitch out on it probably. What time? Also, isn't that movie supposed to be really violent? I like going to barf. According to Todd, it is pretty hardcore. 
I can't assume a Thurman gets stabbed in the heart with a heroin needle, so that's kind of hilarious. Also, something about cheeseburgers is important, but uh, yeah, we'll see it at 7.15, okay? Don't barf. Uh, Alright, see you there. Burger barf. Burger barf. Oh, fair enough. So, they missed the dinner in the house on the Friday. So what happened on the Friday that was so important? Did your dad lose his shit or something? Okay, lights on! Kitty's room? Oh shit, yeah, this might actually be my room. Pictures of clothes, pictures of clothes. Yeah, pictures of clothes. Pictures of clothes. Pictures of clothes. Wow, it's shocking how many pictures of clothes they keep in their drawers. I mean, exactly the same shape and design as real clothes. Wow, those are really, really well photographed clothes. It's almost convinced me as they were trying to make it look like there actually was clothes. Pictures of clothes. More pictures of clothes. More pictures of clothes. More pictures of clothes. Pictures of clothes. Pictures of clothes. Yep, all the pictures of clothes. Really well done. Damn! It's a big ass TV. It's a big ass TV for 1995, really. In a bedroom? Is this your parents' room? It really doesn't look like it. Oh, it is mom's room. Can I open the clasp, please? Open the lid? Anything? You did physics effects to the one bloody tape. Why could you not do it to this? Dear mom, dad, and Sam, I'm in the channel. It's my second passage through the channel. I'm on my way back from London. This time I'm going to Brussels, Belgium. Sorry I didn't write you on the way to London, but I was too excited about the channel. London was great. Dad, I know you always wanted to visit. I think you really should. You love it. It's all what you wanted to come back here and see as a family sometime. I guess I should have convinced you. Love you all. Kitty. Bye. Okay, so mom and dad's room. I do not want to read the Holy Bible. You know what? It'll be a really shitty thing if actually the a major clue is hidden inside one of the Bibles. Put the lamp on. Let's turn on all the lights in the house. Dear John, oh honey, let me tell you, I understand how you feel. Bob and I have had our down periods. It's become a bit of a way of life, actually. You get used to each other. You live our own lives in the same house. The kids grow up, they go away. I'm sorry, this isn't helping, is it? I don't worry. Terry will... <coughs> Terry will get over whatever's distracting him. Things will go back to normal. And as for being distant, there's a teenager for you. Nothing to worry about. In the meantime, though, this controlled burn that sounds like quite the adventure. But let's cut to the chase. This new man ranger they sent. That's what I don't want to hear. That's what I want to hear about. Ranger Rick, you have to be kidding me. It's too perfect. You have to tell me everything and send pictures. I want the whole package. Wait, that sounded wrong. Ha, 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 ha. Keep your chin up until Terry is out of his slump. And in the meantime, write more letters to your old friend Carol. She adores them. Carol. Oh god. Alright, Carol's voice is not cool. That hurt as hell to do. Oh. Hey dad, nerd! Uh, the cider's perfectly fine. I've actually stopped drinking for the last three hours or so. I don't know. Um, what time is it now? Oh yeah, it's uh, about quarter past one. Sweet. So we got a fair bit of time before the stream continues on. I need to get a drink of liquid in my goddamn system somehow, somewhere. Oh, there it is there. There's the cider. Um, I need to sip because I was doing that voice for so long. Oh, Carol, I don't understand how. Oh, God. Fuck Carol's voice. Carol's voice sucks. I do not want to do Carol. I, I hope there's no more letters from Carol, because that hurt the fuck. Three ring binder, put it back. Oh, no. Oh, no. Take your time and glad to have it in good hands. Rick. Well, shit. 
Walt Whitman's Leaves of Grass? Oh, Rick. Oh, Rick. Oh, you suave son of a bitch. I'm going to leave that there for the husband to find in the morning. To our favorite WW. Um. Yeah. Oh. Grab book. Watercolor technique for floors and still lifes. Yay! Fuck that. That's the kind of shit that you find in anybody's house. Sentiment! Anti-depression tablets. Waiting for those. Black fryer for men. Anything openable? Nope! Apparently those are all glued shut! Ugh, where is the switch? There we go. I'm going to turn around and find a blood spatter, but I'm pretty sure that's not the case with any of the story in this. Grab shaving cream? Spray it all over myself! Why don't ya? Eh, yeah, fuck it, I'm gonna flood the house. After the honeymoon, rediscovering your spouse personally, spiritually, and sexually. Ugh. Uh, it really is a bit of an uh, defined way you said, oh god, I don't even want to think about my parents fucking. But they had to do it, they had to do it quite a bit. Ow, ow. Did not expect to slide and door myself there. Okay. Anything else underneath the bed? Everything floats down here. Yeah, you keep out of that, cousin it. Um, nothing? I think I've read everything that was in here. Moving on then. Uh, which direction did I come from? Shit, I can't even tell anymore. Okay, so that's where I went in. This is where I came out. Into that bathroom. Fucking hell, man. There's actually a fair amount of bathrooms in this house. This is a really nice house. Read note. Kitty, Mom and Dad were going to make up the guest room for you to stay in over the summer, but you came home on such short notice that they weren't around to do it. You can use my room if you want. I won't be needing it anymore. Okay. What the fuck? Sam's enter... Sam's dark room. Do not enter if red lights are on. Ooh, right. Um, I cannot see anything in here. Oh, shit. All right, so this was the guest room in the new house. Obviously, uh, Kitty had never lived in this house whenever they moved. Cat, yeah, yeah, this is all the stuff that she would have been moving into. Hey, Sam, you're asking what my... I ROTC ribbons meant. Here's a handy guide. Orienteering, rifle team, adventure training. Okay, so you don't think it was cool before? Now you do. Lonnie D. Oh, wait. So Lonnie was ROTC. Cool. Composition book. Sighting journal. A tall shadow in the upstairs hall when I rounded the corner and no one was there. How tall was Uncle Oscar? I was not wearing my glasses. Okay, Sam wears glasses. Hmm. Faint voice coming from the bottom of the stairs. I said hello. Do not investigate. Probably was the furnace. Poured milk from carton and fridge. It was spoiled. Pretty sure I read the spirits can sire milk. Milk was just bought yesterday. Moo. Ghost milk. Lonnie says she feels a presence in the TV room. Suddenly begin to feel cold. We build a protective pillow for it. Ha! Lonnie and I employ a Ouija board as a medium. Disturbing messages are conveyed from the other side. Oscar is definitely here. And listed Lonnie to stay up all night and help patrol premises recording any signs of otherworldly presence. Lonnie reported many signs, but all remained unconfirmed. Possible ectoplasm in attic, probably leaky due to leaky roof. Sample taken just in case. Despite our best efforts, we both fell asleep around 4 a.m. All in all, a successful night. Aw, oh, that's a cute... Oh, so cute! Aw, sweetie, that that was adorable. Uh, so that was her investigations. Why is she listed inside this room, though? 
along with all my shit. She don't want the parents to see? So, she doesn't want it anymore. Obviously, this is where I'm going to go next. Well, in here next first. Click. Ooh, wow. This must be Mom's painting room? Oh, it's quite nice. Uh, light up the room. So, uh, performance evaluation. Richard Pattermatch for Janice Greenbrier. Oh, Janice, we're getting your report card. Fantastic. Hope you did well. Uh, Ranger Pryor match has been indispensable during the... Oh, this is a Greenbrier filling in for him. Believe his expertise and dedication has become the deciding factor in the success of very complex and challenging conservation effort. Woohoo! In the opinion of the Flintlock Forest staff, Rick's contributions of daily operations have become essential to the benefits of continuing success. The Zanda will be formally submitting paperwork requesting his permanent reassignment to this facility. Ugh. I sure you are, dearie, dearie. You want them all for yourself? You want your own Ranger Rick? Halloween show! The misfits, they're awesome! Don't forget your costume! City and Lounge, 1029, 4 p.m. See you there! Lonnie. Sometimes you just have to lie to mom and dad. Like when Lonnie asked me to see a band with her and stay over at her friend's place in the city after. That's yep. a lie to mom and dad situation. But it was so worth it. The girls on stage were just so loud and real and awesome. And everybody was moving together like one huge tide of sound. Between two songs, Lonnie leaned over and said, How do you like your first show? I was so happy. I felt tears starting in my eyes. And then she up and hugged me. I think she could tell. Yeah, man, um, first gigs are always really, really kind of like powerful to you, even, it does not really matter on what it was you went to see either. I mean, I went and saw Ash as my first gig ever with, um, a few friends of mine's. Um, it was, it was my first gig. And it was really, I, I loved the shit out of it. I really, really enjoyed myself. Um, I think I had a towel from the band afterwards, which was even weirder. Heavens of Betsy, nothing can stop me. Alright, let's see. What's it sound like? Hmm. Let's groove on. That was really well put together. Should I have actually done something else before doing that? I don't think I need to come back to this room for any reason other than that. So let's see. Skills for a healthful life? Alright. JSNC! What? Oh shit! Right. Lonnie, holy crap, I was in the library and I noticed something in the corner and I found a secret passage and it had Oscar's creepy old stuff in it. Oh my god, I have to get to the... I've got to see this, we're skipping sick. Fucking right we are. Sewing room that we're in. The bathroom. Closet. So mom and dad's room. And it's in the closet. In mom and dad's room. Okay. Fuck yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, so cute. So Lonnie's her first, first mate. Oh wow, that's adorable. All right, so we need to go back to another room. Have the Betsy. That was loud. But let's uh, not play that while we're investigating. So, I said not to go into the attic just yet, so I'm going to go and take a look at the secret room first. Uh, it's back. Down in Mum and Dad's room. It's Mum and Dad's room. Closet. 
It has to be in here somewhere. Where is the... Is there a loose floorboard or something? Rick, 8 o'clock Friday. Aw, oh, Mom. That's really shitty. You gotta work on your problems instead. Ooh. Escape from Ghost Mansion! Woo! Few of the shades you. <laughs> They're throwing shade! Throwing shade! Actually, literally threw the shade. Eh, whatever. Oh, shit! That caught me off guard. Um. Okay, going downstairs. Damn! That's a bit odd. It's all closing? Okay. Ghost Hunters, Stam and Lonnie in Secret House Investigation Log. Hidden compartments found, three. Library, upstairs hall, foyer. Experi evidence of the supernaturals discovered, zero. The search continues. That's fucking cool. I want a house with secret panels. Actually, shit. I actually do live in a house with secret panels. Huh. So, wall panels. So now we have to go around clicking every wall panel. Oh, you bastard. I can't see anything in here now. Ah, can't see anything down in the hallway now. Piece of crap. Ah, no! Ah, no! Give me back my cross. I wanted to read what it said on first. Yeah, you just had to be creepy, didn't you? What does it say on the cross? Because I didn't get to see it before it actually went weird. What? God so loved the world he gave his only son. Ah. Well. What's the other panels I need to find? Right. So we haven't been to all the rooms, so we'll get the other one that was listed there. <laughs> down the hall, down the hall, hall, hall. Yep, left. Wait, what? No, that's not right. Oh, right. Hang on. It's actually out here. In the wall. Hey! Yeah, fuck that. I'm digging this down. So, notes. Okay. Hello? Hello. Who are you? Oscar, what do you want? To come back! <laughs> Alright. To open, first number, turn left on number to stop, turn right, and pull shackle. To open, turn to first. Half of Sam's locker combo onto the backpack. Alright. Well, nothing on it. Never mind! What's that one done? Go downstairs now to the foyer. Sweet. Is that everything on this floor I've looked at? Throwing room, sitting room, guest room, Sam's room. Uh, to the weird downstairs, separate rooms. Yep.
To the foyer! Alright, so... There's one right through this door on the right-hand side. Boom! Heaven at the Edge of the World, The Green Glacier, Part 2, Samantha Greenbrier, Ninth Grade. Private, do not read! Okay, of course we're going to read it. Mm, oh, hang on, I need a voice. I need a voice stressor or a verse, voice soother for this. Mm. Uh, right. Allegra and her scouting party peered down warily through the dense canopy of rustling leaves from their perch high in the forest branches. Mere feet away, sunlight shone brightly off the inner ice walls, the glacial basin in which the forest grew. It was a strange sight indeed, such lushness just juxtaposed with the frigid ice formations. Allegra leapt forward without hesitation, bounding through the high branches. The first mate had been captured by the green glaciers of Amazonian tribe. His life hung in the balance. We have to hurry! Allegra's party followed behind, moving quietly as the breeze through the greenery. Allegra landed in the clearing and shouted, Stop! She saw the Queen Amazonian up on her pedestal, reaching for the lever that would drop her first mate into the vat below. She shouted, No! and flung her saber at the uh, Amazon's reaching hand, but it was too late. The first mate screamed as he fell toward the water, then splashed down and all was eerily silent. Allegra looked on, frozen in fear and remorse. She had become, been a moment too late. But then, from the vat, something began to emerge. A head of dark brown hair, just like the first mate's, then the shoulders and sleeves of his coat soaking wet. But as the figure stood, the water poured down. Allegra saw that the first mate had changed. He was no longer a man at all. In fact, we looked back at her were the eyes, the face, the hair and hands and body of a woman. Still in the first mate's clothes. Still the first mate, he, she spoke in a soft, clear voice. Captain? The Amazonian queen said, She is one of us now. She is ours. Allegra drew her magical flintlock pistols from her belt and her crew readied their swords. Allegra glared into the queen's eyes and said, That's the love of my life and you can't have her. All right, cool. Turn right three times, stop at blah, 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 blah. Property of Sam, private. Okay, cool. Completed combination of Sam's locker added to backpack. All right, cool. So, yes. Continue in this hallway, go to Dad's office. So, yeah, this has to be Lot's uh, ROTC picture. Lot is cute. Back she goes. And into Dad's office, into the back room. All whiskey and no sleep make Dad something, something. Daddy. Oh, fuck you. Oh, hang on a second, folks. Oh, let's go to sneeze. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. I apologize for how loud that was. I just have a very, very active nasal cavity. The Misfits, Saturday, October 29th. Plus special guest, Maidenhead, Stygia, 306 Franklin Street. All right, just into the dark. At Todd's brother's place after the show, there was only a futon to sleep on, so Lonnie and I shared it. The lights went out. I was turned toward her. My eyes started to adjust, and then I could see... She was looking at me, too. In the dark, she smiled. My heart was beating so fast. I rolled over. I felt so, I don't know, nervous? After a minute, she put her arm around me and was so close and whispered in my ear, I really like you. I just nodded my head and I really hoped she could tell. I really hope that she meant what I think she did. Oh. I felt like a shook up can of soda ever since. I hope we have the chance to talk before I explode. Oh uh, yeah, that'd be a good thing. So, Sam's room, yes. Locker time. Ah shit, now I need to actually see what it is. Oh, 51. Boom! Lonnie came in today. But everything was... different. 
she was sitting at my desk chair, and she wouldn't look at me. Finally, okay. I asked her what was going on. She said she felt like she'd done something wrong that night in the city. Like I must think... But I said no. There was nothing wrong. I just wanted to say... But I couldn't find the words. Aw, Sam! I felt like I was gonna cry, but I wasn't sad. She got up and sat next to me on the bed. I looked at her. Lonnie... Do you think you could ever... And that's when she kissed me. Yay! <laughs> We're waiting for that to happen. <laughs> Yay! Oh, that's cute. That's cute. I'm glad. Uh, what's she smoking? Morley filters? God, I could die for a cigarette right now. Obviously, shoplifting? Cheeky bitch. Oh, okay. <laughs> Finally, Jillian Anderson. Yes, Shannon Doherty. Yes. <laughs> oh, the 1990s. Oh, how we loved them all. Shannon Doherty, of course, uh, in Mallrats. And Gillian Anderson, of course, from uh, X-Files. I don't know why I blanked on her there for a second. But yep, yeah, Sam, you keeping your uh, girly mag to yourself? Oh, I need to check that. Yeah, that's actually just a timer I set for the 2 a.m. start for the uh, live stream for Bethesda, which apparently is now 3 a.m., so we've got plenty of time. So I'm hoping I can actually get this finished before that. So we need to start moving our asses. We need to shift some fucking gears. We need to move our buttocks down the basement. Right, to the basement! Basement time! I'm trying to remember how to get the damn stairs. Uh, yeah, there we go. Nope, wrong direction. I've got a, such a horrible, horrible feeling it'll be something really shitty that's going to happen to the girls now. <laughs> like the, um... Suicide double packed. I mean, the terrifying things is that these games tend to not end well, especially in a big empty space. Like either that or her and her girlfriend are just making out in the dark room, which is absolutely fine. Was it basement key or was it this key? Ah, it was basement key. Okie dokie. Are they having like a party in the attic maybe for us? I don't know. Kind of keeping us all surprised. Wait, what? Dad's office? There's a secret passageway? Was that there before? I remember there being a secret passageway in Dad's office before. Oh, shit. Um, we need more daylight in here, man. I can see sweet fuck all. All right. So this connects this room to uh, dad's room. Right. Huh, that makes sense. Quick way up and down the stairs. Well, whatever. Don't know why I didn't notice that the first time. Eh. Either way, all opened. So now into the basement. Yeah. That's right. Yes, yes it is. Then down here, and then to the left. I'm worried that we're actually going to find Dad's murdered somebody. That's that's my that's that's the bad news I'm worrying about. I don't want to see. I don't want the dad to have lost his shit and killed anyone. Why is it the basements are automatically always creepier whenever you wander into them? Boom! Light switch. I better be able to see what you can fucking see. Uh, uh. Oh, chips. Nice! Nom 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 nom. Alright, finish with those. 
Dear Samantha, I'd like to cordially thank you for having me to your home abode for the Thanksgiving holiday with your lovely family. I enjoyed the something potatoes and also it was weird being around your parents for that long but it was pretty funny. How impossible it is for your dad not to be awkward for more than 30 seconds at a time. Very cordially yours, your close friend and confidant, Lonnie D. Mm, indeed, quite. <laughs> Dear Miss DeSoto, let me take this opportunity to thank you and a kind for being such a gracious host of the festivities at your father's estate following the aforementioned meal with my parents. Your family Thanksgiving feast was more enjoyable than of the two events, I must say. I appreciate, especially appreciate the time I spent with your grandmother, who is a lovely woman with a sterling taste and a refined air. Let's do it again sometime next year, shall we? Yes, indeed. Madam Samantha Greenbrier, Esquire. <laughs> indeed. Quite. <laughs> Okay. Oh, this? Ah, uh, Sammy! It's different now. I mean, we still hang out all the time like before. But now when no one else is around... Well, you know. So you could say we're dating. But it's secret. Secret dating? I don't know. I mean, yep. I guess that's the real difference. Now when we get off the phone, or go home for the night or it's just quiet and we're alone oh say I love you oh oh K is for kind A is for amazing I is for intelligent T is for talented L is for lighthearted L is for important and it's for nice Kitlin all right well, I'm not just kitty I'm Kitlin or shit of minds oh man one of my old oh right what do we do for it? Uh, da -da, tick, of course. Doing body. Yeah. So we didn't really have the imagination that our sister Sam did. We're obviously not quite the more interesting person. She has a more interesting life. Oh. Oh. Oh, there's another door. Where's the other door? It looks like there's another door. It has to be around here. Oh, there it is. Furnace. Bernie Burn. The light switch in here? Bam! Let there be light! Oh, <laughs> socket in the roof. Alright, so, obviously this door must have cooled down outside. Granddad's books! Oh. Joyce, a complete understanding. Alright. Oh, well, our dad, grandfather must have been a... Do not scare me, Storm! Reed College, Samantha Greenbrier. Dear Samantha, congratulations and pleased to inform you of admission to the creative writing track of the Reed College Summer Program for Young Scholars for its 1995 session. We believe you, we have much to contribute to the Reed College community based on your portfolio and academic record. I'm also pleased to offer you financial aid to cover 75% of the summer's programs, tuition, and fees. Slash documentation delineates your schedule, optional security track choices, secondary track choices, and your dormitory assignment. Please remember to submit the attached form if you want to be eligible for one of the three Reed full-time undergraduate scholarships to be awarded to assembly students at the end of each summer program. We very much look forward to your attendance. Again, congratulations on your admission and best wishes for all from all of us at Reed College. Cool! I'm so stupid sometimes. I was telling Lonnie that I got into my college summer program thing, and I was all making plans like, you should come visit me, stay in my dorm room. But she said, Sam, I ship out on June 6th. I was like, ship out? To where? She said, to basic training. What did you think I was doing all that ROTC stuff for? I guess she's been planning to join the army right after high school since she was like, 12. And I guess she's really going to do it. Yeah. So I was like, after graduation, I'm just never going to see you again? She said, let's just have fun while we can. Oh, well, shit. Yeah, I mean, you're you guys are a team. I'm gonna high, hold on to each other nonstop. I mean, it would be really, really cool. But 14k gold hard pendant, two halves, customizable with up to 10 letters, names, dates, initials, anything you can dream of. Gift box and imported. Alan asked. That's a cute gift. As like a graduation and leaving each other gift. That's a really cool idea. 
Dear Terence, thank you for sending along a copy of your newly published book. An author's first published manuscript is a momentous occasion. I read it this afternoon. I certainly recognize my son in the subject matter. An author's work is the externalization of that which he holds dear and that which he fears. And in this respect, I believe your work was successful, but the lens through which your personal show, your pers the personal shown was needlessly clouded by general geek shades and impossible implausible dime store science fiction day ex machina. I congratulate you on the surviving the greater deal that is publication, and rest assured that readers of your chosen genre will lap up copies hungrily, but I urge you to shed artifice. You can do better with Father's Love and Encouragement, Richard Greenbrier, PhD. Huh. Well, I did read his writing and it wasn't very good, and I believe that may be the reason why. This is like this. Yeah, man. Gotta chill. Your pops is a published writer and critiquer of Joyce, for God's sake. So, you kind of, you're kind of going to have to go really impress me if you're going to try and do anything like that. Oh, wow. Ooh, keys? All right. Cool. <laughs> Girl Scout, the cub band formerly known as Club Scout, set list, role model, authority, mean squeeze, telling stories, instruction, first mate, self, Girl Scout's denial. Todd's band lost their singer. Todd said he sucked. Lonnie said he got sick of Todd's shit, and he was complaining about needing a new singer. So Lonnie was like, I can sing. And they were all kind of like, you can? And she was like, probably. But she's been rehearsing with them for like a week now. And I finally got to see them play in Todd's basement today. And she's actually really amazing. I feel so proud when she's on stage. It's incredible being in awe of someone you love. So everybody knows it's like a temporary situation till she ships out in June. Yeah. Until then, she's I'm all yours. Every single show. T heart pedman custom engraving seventy nine. Yep, cool. So she got the jewelers. She got the things. Sweet. That's awesome. Let me guess. This is Lonnie's voice. Sweet. Let's get to hear. Nice stuff. Um, cool, but uh, I don't want to be able to you see. Uh, I want to be able to hear stuff, you know, while I, you know, do the show. So I'm gonna turn that off for a second. So, dear Sam, I'm so happy you liked the drawing. I was thinking of us when I drew it. I knew you'd be able to tell. You'd love Mexico, I think, probably. The nature here is totally different than back home. I keep thinking about Allegra and the first mate lost on the mysterious island where even the plants are out to get them. And uh, then I think of them together out there in the wilderness together, and I start thinking of you again. I lie here in bed and I can almost feel you. I've been trying to save it up for when we're together again. I haven't done a good job, okay? But I tried. Okay, enough about that. Your last letter got to me the day before we started uh, driving back north. We'll be racing this letter home. If I get home first, we can read it together. And yes, I'm thinking ton taking tons of photos. We have to spend so much time in the dark room. Ah, yay! They're in the dark room. They're in the dark room. They're in the dark room. Ah, sweet. So, what's in each of these rooms? Kitchen, library, front door, Mr. Masan's room, guest room. Huh, cool. So, light switch. Ah, floor plan of the house. Stairs to the basement, music rooms, ba -ba, dining. So the, the dining, greenhouse, laundry, washroom, kitchen. Yeah. I don't have a combination for this. Hmm? Ah.
I'm gonna walk into darkness. Any kind of light that I can get out in here? Ah! Wait, what was it? Oh! Oh! Whoa! Wait, what? Terry. So. Huh. Right. Why was Terry in the basement every Thanksgiving? Weird. I'm just puzzled by that. Just for the fact that why was Terry down here in the basement every Thanksgiving? In like the darkest rooms in the building. I find that a little bit odd. Anyway, so, right. We have looked. Oh, wait, no, there's a room we're missing? Cool. I haven't gone in here yet. We might find something interesting. Hey Sam, I'm writing to you from Monoa Falls. I'm here on a stupid class trip, which is stupid because it's March and I don't know anyone running the school that's been to Oregon, but it's cold and rainy and shit in March. Wish you were here. Oh, wait, you are here, because I'm writing this to you in the gift shop. Oh, shit, here you come. Aww. Aww. I love them! I tell you to stick with the group on field trips, Katie. There's a reason for that. Lonnie and I snuck off on the side paths at Multnomah Falls and got a little lost. Okay, a lot lost. Like, for hours. Right before the bus left, we found a trail and came running down the path, soaked and covered in mud, shouting for the bus not to leave. The school called home. Mom and Dad said, you didn't get into trouble like this before you met that Lonnie girl. But I don't think they know, no, about us. Kids at school, though, I'm really afraid that's a whole other story. Stick with the group, Katie. Stick with the group. Okay. Masson's pharmacy changes hands. The shoppers at Main Street were surprised today at the announcement of Masson's Pharmacy would change ownership from the first time since it opened ten years ago. Rumors swelled that the sudden sale of the pharmacy was transacted for a song when asked about speculation that the deal had been signed for as little as one dollar. Mr. Samuel Onstein, Oscar Masson's longtime assistant and now proprietor of the Masson Pharmacy, told the register the specifics will remain between myself and Mr. Masson. Mr. Masson had taken sick and was unavailable for comment. All right. I don't know if he went... People are saying he went psycho. What was the psycho bit about? Ooh. Where are we? Wait, what? Oh, we're on the other side of the house. Okay. Bratmobile! Nice. Costumes, skeletons and devils. Cheerleaders from the Smells Like Teen Spirit video. One girl dresses Jackie Candy. Okay. The Psycho House Girl. The coolest stuff about being the Psycho House Girl. Number one cool thing. Everybody in the hall thinking you don't know they're looking at you and whispering as you walk past because I guess they haven't heard of the of peripheral hearing. That's a lie. That's a light mom and dad situation, but it was so worth it. The girls in the were just so loud and real and awesome, and everybody has moving together like one huge tide of sound. Wait. These are the narration bits of this. Samantha Greenbrier, One Arbor Hill. Dear Miss Greenbrier, I appreciate the time and effort you put into writing your letter it showed initiative and was well written, but it does not change my mind on this matter. While I understand that Miss DeSato is a friend of yours, the fact of the matter is that she defaced school property with profanity. 
The fact that she allegedly defaced her own locker in retaliation for another student doing the same of yours is immaterial. As to your complaint that no other student has been punished for their part in this incident, the fact is that no guilty party has come forward, and there has been no convincing evidence as to who might have defaced your locker. In other words, there is no one to punish. I suggest letting this issue drop, as it will only bring more unwanted attention to yourself, which I believe is what you claim began this whole incident in the first place. Fuck you! I don't get Lonnie sometimes. Like, her band, and our zine, and her hair, and everything are all anti-authority. But I watch her in JROTC, and she's doing drills in perfect formation. Following orders, no question. And there's all this stuff in the news about don't ask, don't tell. Like, she's going to join the army and then have to... lie? About who she is? She said... They don't need to know what they don't need to know. Like it was no big deal. This from the girl who trashed her locker to, like, defend my honor. I've learned when to stop arguing, though. I don't think Lonnie even gets Lonnie sometimes. Right. Woman outlaws. This is a girl you, yeah, who runs the things around this joint. Stopping a white Mustang. No female is going to tell me, yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> you like those old comics? Ooh. Derm likey. Oh, cool. Hey, 1995 guys, zines. That is a perfect example of 1990s culture right there. Fuck yeah, zines. I remember even ones that were actually created in my school. Girl, just just. All right, cool. So these are the bits and pieces they used to make their uh, zines. Cool. Um, there should be a tape around here somewhere, right? And that's generally the rule of thumb. If I see a tape player, there's usually a tape nearby. I'm sure I'll find it here in a second. Ah, cool. And that's how we get into uh, that part of the house. So I'm assuming it must be in here, the tape I'm looking for. Click. What the hell? Aha. Ah, oh, cool! Right. So we can get from Cat's room down to that room fairly easily. One, nine, six, three. Bam! There is our combination. One, nine, six, three. Might as well take a look. So, bit of a walkiness to get back to the place we want to go to. Wait, hang on. This is the wrong door. Nope. It is the right way. We just have to go down this way. So, 1963. 1963. 1963. Okay. No more. Then one threat without medical overdose may be dangerous and do keep patient away, but do not exhaust him. Similar respiration, give strong coffee and wash out stomach. What is this? Oh, right. Um, yeah. Solution of morphine tartrate. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Wonder if that would be habit forming. Return to sender? Oh, wow, I cannot read a single bit of this. Uh, dear sister, right, should be the last appeal to go unanswered one way or the other. I feel a prisoner as on an island with no jailer, no human soul to consume. Only my one mind examining itself and... I'm 
the years since transgression I have sought no absolution, only for forgiveness, the good faith I have removed myself from all temptation, sacrificed to prove my commitment. Oh wow, uh, error of the human spirit, but grace. Wow, I really wish I could. I really wish the text wasn't freaking out in this. Do you know what I need to do? Hang on, let's see. Is there something I can do to fix that? I'm gonna save and come back again. I wonder if this will actually help. Because I stopped getting text on screen. That's what I think. Something went wrong and the text boxes stopped appearing rather than me having to read through them. Oh, there we go. Uh, with no jailer approved, remove myself from all temptation, sacrifice, provide my commitment, however I can imagine. Since mother's passing, I have yearned for nothing more than the acknowledgement of my own kin, to be treated as human again, to breathe the air of human spirit once more. So me could be saved, but I do not expect, if no response is received, I shall henceforth accept my sentence, and one day simply cease to be. For brothers love always. Okay. What the fuck did he do? See, he's a pharmacist. Billeron. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Oil of clove. Shit. All painkillers have massive amounts. So, right. Jesus, that's actually annoying whenever it crashes like that. Makes me freak the fuck out. So... Huh. I assume he'd be dead now, then. Well, yeah, of course he's dead. What are you talking about? But yeah, he... Feels like he passed away of... Sickness means? I don't know. Yes, this is the way we go. Back in here, flooping around, floopy de whoop de. Flooping de whooping, whooping de flooping! Okay. Here through this area. Took the stairwell back up the top, so now we're back around here. Light switch. Boom! Now we can see where we're going. Hey, there we go. Now I can actually move through the house properly. In Espanol! Uh, head conversation Greenbrier. So, management of the Flintlock prescribed burn operation should be upgraded. Uh, said you would work in the regional management office in Bullhorn Road. Okay, so mom got a uh, promotion for a plater. Froth tincture. Gets these teenagers of the year! Oh, cool. I'm assuming that must be more of Sam's music choices. Heck. Earth, wind, and fire? <laughs> cool. I'm taking that one with me. Well, put it here. Come on, why do you have so many purses that don't open? Uh, ba -ba, re forest research and education, take care of our forest. Yeah. What's this? Got two tickets for EWF, Earth, Wind, and Fire on Thursday, but my girlfriend says she doesn't want to go. Her TSC music rears its ugly head again. So that leaves me with an extra ticket that I thought you might be interested in. More fun than clearing brush with the freezing rain, right? Okay. So he offered tickets. Mom possibly took the ticket. Uh, vacation is weird. You see, the Catholic Church still has a lot of money left over from the Middle Ages. That's damn true. Next up, Barcelona camp. Down dead. I won't get bored by the gourd by bowl, probably. Eh, uh, yeah. I am. Kitty is the least interesting person of this whole damn show. <laughs> just getting in trouble for distributing. Please call the students' parents out of school supervision. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, whatever. Fuck you, dude. 
The new video here is out this afternoon. Your mother and I are putting this in writing so that we are absolutely clear. You're grounded for the rest of the month from social and telephone purchases and from using your car for anything but going to and from school. We're saying what you're going through, but we can't allow you to continue with this kind of behavior at school. It's clearly, once your privileges are reinstated, we can't allow you to have your bedroom door closed while Lonnie is in the... Oh! There's the last word in the matter. Get back on course so this won't have to happen again. Oh! Fuck you, Mom and Dad! I had an interesting talk with Mom and Dad tonight. One you were never gonna need to have. I mean, you've known, right? I've known. I've known since, like, she -Ra. Mom and Dad didn't, I guess. But they saw the zine and the stuff on the locker, and they were like, Is there something we should know about you and Lonnie? And so here's the thing. I was prepared for them to be mad, or disappointed, or start crying, or something. But they were just in denial. You're too young to know what you want. You and Lonnie are just good friends. You just haven't met the right boy. It's a phase. Ooh. That's what I didn't see coming. That they wouldn't even respect me enough to believe me. Well, joke's on them. Because they're in for one very long phase. Yeah! Fucking hell, parents! Uh, I say congratulations because, come on, you're going to take the job, right? We're waiting for an engraved invitation, call in the back, but in the meantime, let's discuss- Uh, uh congratulations! Janice Greenbrier, Regional Director! And I said congratulations because, come on, you're gonna take the job, right? What are you waiting for? An engraved invitation? Call them back. <coughs> but in the meantime, let's discuss this little outing you had with your favorite flannel clad hunk. What a blast. But you sound like you're reading a lot into an innocent night out. You sure there's something there? You said he has an out-of-town girlfriend. You sure they're not serious? Okay, so we have to figure out when we'll see each other next in person. Enough with the letters. I owe you a congratulating Margaret Rita, boss lady. Soon. Love, Carol. Oh, God. Fuck you, Carol. How do I give you that voice? Okay. So, is that everything in this room? Nope. Not yet. Don't give up on this, honey. The accidental warrior? Yeah, dude! You fuck- uh, You know what, actually? Fuck you. Your book sucks. Go in the bin! I don't know. You gotta respect the parents who actually can't respect their daughter like that. Ooh, the fridge! And uh, request only your presence the marriage of our daughter, Helen Margaret and Peter Pattermatch. Rick! Hey! Rick's wedding! Cool beans! Time schedule working at Crown Burger on Brathel Road. Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Saturdays, 12 to 6. Okay. Um. Anything in here work? I don't want to grab food of any sort. Close fridge. The freezer. Yeah, I... Close freezer. There's so many things to grab in this that are completely unrelevant. I wonder if there's a whole bunch of stuff that I could unlock by doing it. So they... They put... They haven't actually moved... They kind of moved out. Samantha and Danielle were in the woods one day. It was sunny and they were on an adventure. But they went to the bad part of the wood and it got dark. Daniel said, Are you scared? So Samantha said, No. Are you? They left and went more into the bad part than they went to a part that was never there before. And there was a ship, a pirate ship, on an ocean. Samantha said, I'll be the captain, you be the first mate. Daniel said, I, captain, and they went on the pirate ship and started sailing away. Daniel finally came over to get his game. I'd been dreading it. But he brought this story with him that I wrote when we were little. 
they started reading it. And then there I was, crying at the kitchen table. He asked what was wrong, and I was thinking about how we used to be friends, how much I'd taken for granted. But instead, I told him about school, and Dad, and Lonnie. And then how sorry I was that I wasn't his friend anymore. He gave me a hug and said it was going to be okay. For some reason, I almost believed him. Yeah, some special. Right, so yeah, received your formal acceptance letter. Right, so mom took the acceptance letter. That means it moved on. Kitty, come to home this month. We will call with exact date, June thirty seventh, anniversary trip. So they're way in their anniversary trip. That's what's going on. Way in the anniversary trip and have left accidental prayer. Ah, so, this is, uh, and your dad started getting successful again. First, let me say, uh, <clears throat> Dr. Mr. Greenbrier. First, let me say, I hope this massive finds you well. Well, if it feels like a goddamn miracle that it finds you at all. Do you know how long we've been trying to track you down? Worry not, we aren't the feds of men in black or any sort of creeping fascist hobgoblins. In fact, we're on your side. Let me start from the beginning. Unknown Dimensions, what you might call a specialist publishing house. We traffic in the weird, the head of its time, the lost but not forgotten, but a small but dedicated group of plugged in bibliophiles type of out there mass market shunning visionary expression that refuses to be taken on anything but its own terms. We've had an unparalleled run since our inception four years ago, unearthing and reviving Christ or zombie like timeless works such as NM N N Bestman's Message of the Snake Man, It's Inside Me by Jens Keller, or Emil Krieger's off band Venusian Flesh Readers. But ever since we discovered tattered copies of your accidental series at a church rummage sale in Long Beach, uh, New Jersey, we've been trying to track down the author of this weird and dark American outsider art. John Russell, a mild-mannered insurance agent by day, reckless history revising sociopath by night, is a twisted peacekeeper that modern suburban America deserves. It's our mission to bring him back to life. We want your permission to reprint the work since your original publisher, Mercury Books, folded a decade ago. We want you to supply a new foreword for the books to appear in brand new editions of The Accidental Savior and The Accidental Pariah to be produced by Unknown Dimension as a limited run and marketed directly to our highly discerning customer base. We look forward to embarking with you and to thrusting your scre work screaming back into the sweating palms of our unsp unsuspecting American public. It's about time. Blast off. Kaz Manchikatic, publisher, Unknown Dimensions Limited, Michigan Avenue, Newark, New Jersey. Okay, so he got a reprint. And uh, a reprint of his 1960s book. Fair play. That means Dad's got a upbeat kind of look in the world, I'm sure now. Shit. That's an old book. Ooh. I asked Lonnie what she had to do to get ready to ship out for basic training. She said, not a lot, really. You're not allowed to bring anything with you. You have no possessions. No contact with the outside world while you're in basic. You just train hard every day, and then you deploy from there. So, they'll just send her away. To who knows where. The other side of the country. The other side of the world. My mind, like, can't process it. She's really going to be... Gone. Just gone. Yeah, I think um, I already know the other side of this because I unlocked the story of her and Lonnie going up to the attic together. So I think I may have gone a little bit out of order, I suppose, about this. Um, so I really just want to go up to the attic now. I mean, if there's any reason that I can't go to the attic? Fuck it, I'm going to the attic. I mean, I've seen everything else there is in here. Uh, is there anything important? Yeah, love kitty found this. What? Yep. Going away show for, ah uh, man. Going away show for Lonnie. Lonnie had her going away show with her band tonight. 
She's so incredible on stage. When she was singing, I could practically forget everything. That we only had 48 hours left. That I don't know what comes next. That I can't live without her. Then she dedicated the last song to me. And I couldn't take it. I was out on the curb in the alley, sobbing till my ribs hurt. I would follow her anywhere, Katie. But I can't. Where she's going. After a long time, she found me. She said she was sorry. She said, I wish things could be different. I just wanted to make you happy. I said, I don't think you can anymore. Couples counseling. Ah, that's where they're waiting for their long trip. Accidental human. Ooh, new book. Dear Cats, I can't tell you what a joy to see John Russell back in print. Thank you very much for sending along copies of the new editions. The cover art is really something. Now, you said that Unknown Dimension isn't in the business of printing new material, but this revived my interest in my work. Has brought on a wave of inspiration, resulting in the manuscript to complete John Russell's journey, which I think you may find intriguing. It's reflective and introspective without forgetting the excitement and weirdness that Unknown Dimension readers expect. Well, this might be an exciting new direction for Unknown Dimension to pursue. At the very least, I'm grateful that John Russell's adventures didn't come to an end quite when I thought they had. Many thanks and regards, Terence Greenbrier. Yeah, so you used the opportunity. Smart move. It's been almost 20 years since John Russell heard the call. Twice he saved a president's life. He's practically forgotten the days of the future, of danger and excitement, the days where he mattered. So when the familiar rip in time opens in front of him and his handlers peer out, he doesn't hesitate. Is the president in danger? No. The life you save this time will be your own. That's a good idea. Good idea for the story. See your door under stairs? Now the preparations are complete. <gasps> Ooh! A uh, secret door foyer? Final preparations are complete. We agreed our last night together would be our happiest ever. Ooh, good and we girls. forget tomorrow was going to come at all. It worked for a while. We had a good time seeing Oscar off. Then ran up to the attic to look through our photos. To find one for Lonnie to take with her. And looking at them, I realized they were all in the past. And there wouldn't be any more. I didn't know what I was going to do. And I cried. And she Aww. helped me. She said she knew it was hard, but life would move on. I said I didn't want my life to keep moving without her. That's when she cried too. I was so exhausted. I must have fallen asleep like that, in her arms. In the morning, I woke up. And I was finally alone. <sighs> God, Lonnie. Wait, what? Oh, right. That's how you got in there. <laughs> Never mind. Whoa! Oh, right. <laughs> I don't know what the hell is going on here. Oscar. Yeah, creepy Oscar. Ah, oh, there we go. Out of key. Sweet. The sunset light in this house is the saddest thing I've ever seen. I just want to sleep. When I'm in the attic, it almost feels like Lonnie could still be here. She's just downstairs. 
I'm just waiting to hear her pull down the hatch and come running up. Maybe I'll go up to the attic and wait. All right. I really hope I'm not going to regret this. Sam? Sam? Sis? Yes, I love you, Ronnie. Oh my god. Katie. I fell asleep in the attic, in Lonnie and my old spot, and I missed the first two calls. I just barely caught the third one before the machine got it. And it was Lonnie, on oh, a payphone. Oh shit, phone. right. She'd been on the bus to basic, and she said she couldn't, she couldn't think of anything but me, and us, and that she couldn't go through with it, with the army and being a part, and all of it. And so she got off the bus in Salem. She said, Sam, I want you to pack up everything you can and get in your car and come find me. And let's just drive until we find somewhere for us. And she asked me if I could do that. And I said, yes. Cool. Yes. Good on you, kiddo. That's fucking awesome. Katie, I'm so sorry that I can't be there to see you in person. Oh. That I can't tell you all this myself. Yeah, it's okay. But I hope as you read this journal and you think back that you'll understand why I had to do what I did. Yeah. And that you won't be sad and you won't hate me. And you'll just know that I am where I need to be. I love you so much. Awesome. Katie. I'll see you again. See you soon, Sam. Someday. And invite me to come Love. and see you and Lonnie. Yes. Come on. That's beautiful, man. Oh, 90s indie film all over the shop. Yeah. Fulbright Company, Steve Gaynor, Carlos Emojin, Johnny Manhart Norton, Kid Craig. Well done. Good walking simulator right there. Cool. I'm glad nobody had ever told me what the plot of this game had been previously. Sarah Grayson as Sam. Sarah L. Male as Kitty. Jesus, casting all the Sarahs. He's Lonnie. Kevin's the Betsy. Brapmobile, the Youngins. Chris Remo doing the original soundtrack. That's pretty cool. Oh, man. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this. This was going home on the PS4. I, I'm glad I played through this in a single sitting and I had the right opportunity to play it now while waiting for the uh, continuation of uh, our Wild Eye streams. Obviously, we're, going, we're still about 30 minutes ahead of time for watching the Bethesda show. So we're probably going to take a wee break as this credits finish, and then uh, <laughs> pretty much move on to... Oh, i got to turn you down. Don't I? <laughs> it's shocking how loud this is. There you go. <laughs> yeah, enjoy the hell out of that. Oh, no, 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 you didn't actually turn down, no, down properly. That works better. <laughs> Extra special thanks, my friends and family for their unending support and encouragement. Yeah, and their cats. <laughs> oh man, that was really enjoyable, guys. I'm glad I actually played through this. Um, yeah, this was Gone Home on the PS4. Yeah, 
thank you for making the game. Uh, the story of Sam and Lonnie. Something I didn't think I was going to be watching tonight. But a very well told story through somebody wandering through a house. The tales of their lives, the bits and pieces were left behind. I honestly thought there was something more surreal going on there. But that was exactly what I wanted to see in here. <sighs> Sam and Lonnie. I salute you. Um, well, the fact that the girl was trained to be military and decided against it and went some other way. I hope the two of them travel off and are happy together. I mean, Sam and Lonnie, very life is strange, you know? It's very, very similar in the same way. <sighs> the silver or platinum for gone home. <laughs> wow. Okay, so guys, I'm going to take a wee break here on the stream. Um, it'll start back up again in just a few minutes. We're going to be watching the Bethesda uh, E3 um, conference. I need to hit the bathroom, get myself ready, and set up some of the lights and all that kind of stuff again. And I will see you guys very, very shortly. This has been Gone Home for the PlayStation 4 for an episode of Passage of Skin here on the channel. Uh, if you want to actually catch more of the E3 coverage this week, make sure to keep in touch and follow on the Twitter, on the Facebooks, on the YouTubes, and on the Twitch. Most of all, being past teacher skin or pastiche of derm twitch.tv forward slash pastiche of skin youtube.com forward slash pastiche of skin twitter forward slash pastiche of derm and yeah I, I'm trying to remember all of them man it's actually the fact they're all the same I really should just have an end card on most of these videos to be able to tell you guys but the links will always be down below or up above or somewhere on the screen and I hope to see you guys all in the next video bye bye <laughs> Man, Sam and Lonnie, you had me scared for a long time there. Oh, I'm so happy he's all worked it out.